Welcome, crypto family, to the number one daily Bitcoin podcast. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as we continue to correct. And quoting the high priest Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, the Sailor Plunge Protection team is busy stacking them stats. Bitcoin has a hard floor and no top. The risk reward of Bitcoin has never been better. Buyers today have the least risk owning Bitcoin that at any time in its history. We're also going to be discussing the latest Ethereum technical analysis, as well as GBT outflows topping 358 million but one theory suggests it's almost over we'll also be discussing argentina's ditching the u.s dollar turning to bitcoin in droves amid 276 percent inflation i'll be breaking down this latest report we'll also be discussing bitcoin can soar 266 percent to 250 thousand dollars per coin next year if these etf inflows maintain strong according to standard chartered bank we'll also be discussing bitmax author BitMEX's Arthur Hayes predicting Bitcoin will hit $1 million in this particular bull market cycle before this bull cycle is over. I'll be sharing the timeline. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. Welcome, crypto fam. I know I'm streaming bright and early today. They say the early bird catches the BTC. Just saying. How you doing, McFootinator? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you back, Jennifer. Glad to hear you're feeling better than yesterday. I know yesterday you weren't feeling so great. Unfortunately, we're correcting. Uh, we just dumped a few thousand dollars right before I hit the live button. So we're going to be breaking all this down and why we're currently correcting and how low the Bitcoin price is likely to go from here. Let me know where you guys are tuned in from. Holla. Shout out for hoes. Good to see ya. Good morning, Don George. We need to pump this mofo up. Pump, 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 pump it up. Woo. Pump, 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 pump. Snowing in Detroit. Beautiful day here in Puerto Rico. Probably 90 degrees. Beautiful skies. Can't complain about the weather here. Larry Lowe, rocket ship to the moon. Send it. Good to see you, broski. Shout out, James. Elsie, pleasure to have you here. Shout out, Don George. Barack Monfils Evangelista, super early today. Greetings from Germany. Shout out, Desomo. Good to see you as well. Shout out, Crypto Surge. Good morning, JV. Glad to see you. That's right. Shout out to the mods. Greatly appreciate your guys' hard work out there. Yeah, Bitcoin correction of roughly $4,000 on the day. Great time to be stacking them stats, especially considering a having 30 days out. You look cool with the perpetual baseball hat. Add some orange highlights to symbolize the biddies. Also, when will GBTC drop the fees? They're hemorrhaging. I know we're going to be discussing GBTC outflows here today. Toasty toast. Good questions. JV, all good this side, bud. Good to hear that. Sailing, always a pleasure. Shout out South Africa. Pre-show dump so we can pump during the show. Now you're speaking my language, James. Bali. I miss Bali, yo. I spent 30 days there. Had a blast. A great place to be. Uh, shout out, Blee. Are you from there just visiting? I do recall visiting Ubud, Ubud, however you pronounce it. It was a pretty cool city. We traveled all around uh, Bali. It was a lot of fun. Not selling until 1 million. Dip for the ants. There you go, SF Hoddle. Hoddle be thy name. Just saying. Hey. Pump it up if you game and went long. Yeah. When the dip hits, you, you just, just ate like King, King Kong. Kong. Let's go. Pump it up, don't you know? Pump it up. Wakey, wakey, Bitcoin and bakey. You guys need to get up here bright and early. I guess it depends what part of the world you're tuning into the live stream. It is 10.35 a.m. here, live and in the flesh in Puerto Rico. Good morning. You've got to pump it up, don't you know? Pump it up. You got to pump it up. Yes, sir. Yeah, I can't believe Grayscale says, sir, just wild. Then they're down to the 300,000 range worth of Bitcoin. They had over 600,000 two months ago. They've been dumping like cray cray. You know what I mean? East Los Angeles in the house. California love. Shout out Kitty Crusher. Good to see you, family. Bright and early in Cali. What is that, 7.30 a.m. right now, fam? Bitcoin to 100 Gs, baby. Hit the likes. Appreciate the reminder, Jennifer. 
Yeah, I mean, Grayscale, I mean, I don't think it's their decision to sell. I think the people are ditching it because the fees are astronomical, 1.5% annually compared to alternatives such as BlackRock and uh, Fidelity and ARK21, which have very competitive fees. I think they're even free for the first so many billions of assets flowing into the fund. And then it's like 0.15%, 0.2%. So Grayscale is like 8 to 10x uh, the rest of the fees. So that would explain why so many people are dumping their shares, in my opinion. What are your guys' thoughts? The sooner Grayscale is out of business, the better for all of us. Seems that way. And want to know the irony? If it wasn't for Grayscale's lawsuit against the SEC, we wouldn't even have the Bitcoin ETF. They would have never got their trust converted into a spot Bitcoin ETF. And lo and behold, because of them, we got the green light. The regulators um, couldn't deny it any longer. Take that, Gary Gensler. And uh, now they're dumping everything. It's wild. Maybe it's an inside job for all we know. Who really knows? Mind boggling. Shout out Sammy G. Happy Friday, TGIF. Let's get it. Shout out Jay Ford. Love and light family. Good to see you here with us. Something fishy going on. I agree, Dirty. Something not adding up. How do you keep up with what's that, Raymond? What are we keeping up with? Pumping it up. Shout out, Raymond. Cheers. When's you going to quit the outflows? Don't they want to keep some for the customers still? <laughs> Apparently, I think it's the customers uh, dumping their shares. I think the fees are not competitive with anyone else in the market. So we'll see how it plays out. We're going to be discussing that here today, of course. Buy the dip, an excellent buy the dip opportunity, family. My Uncle Lou Skunt is 69 and bought at 69. Shout out to him for holding strong and not getting scared. Shout out to Toasty Toast's Uncle Lou Skunt. What a G. Maybe even 100,000 by summer. Maybe even by this spring. You never know. So from this dip, we go into 90 Gs. I mean, the, the current top is 73.8. And keep in mind, we hit that one week ago. So that's the current all-time high, 73.8. We hit one week ago. Let's not get it twisted. Uh, Bitcoin just had a 45% uh, increase in the month of February. A price action went up by 25,000 USD. You already know. But anyways, fam, if you're just joining us, make sure to smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day like this. Also important to hit that thumbs up, hit the like. It helps support the channel and helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. Today is pod episode number 1587. I'm your host, JV. And it's March 22nd, 2024. We're having a bit of a correction here this morning, right before I hit that live button. We started dipping. So let's break it down with our market watch as we do each and every day. Bitcoin down 5%, trading just above 63,400. Also, Ether down 6%, trading at $333. Solana down 10%, and not looking good for the vast majority of the alt market. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, we're currently sitting on a 2.4 trillion market cap with 115 billion in volume for the past 24 hours. The Bitcoin dominance at 51.7%. Ether dominance still on the decline at 16.5%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours. And a quick shout out to Barack Monfils Evangelista for the super. He wrote, just picked up another 160,000 sats because they're on sale today. Well done, brother. BTFD, thank God it's Friday. TGIF, let's get it. But yeah, we have Phantom leading the pack 10%. We got Aptos 6% and ICP 6%. Very modest gains as the majority of the alts are correcting and in the red and checking out a visual perspective, perspective. on the daily. Safe to say like 95% of them correcting and in the red right now. But zooming out on the monthly, y'all must have forgot. We still have witnessed a pretty massive altcoin surge. I mean, many of these uh, meme coins up 500%, which is mind boggling. Floki with Pepe. And uh, we even have Sheeb up 169% on the month. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're currently at 75 greed. Yesterday, 78 extreme, 83 last week, and last month, a 78 in extreme greed. And checking out the Bitcoin having countdown clock, the estimated having date scheduled to take place currently April 24th. This can change, give or take a few days, because it's all depending upon the current block. Now, uh, yeah, 33 days out, family. 
recently and checking out the blockchain calendar or time chain calendar. We're currently on block number 835,789 and $1 is currently equivalent to 1,582 Satoshis. Not too shabby because a week ago when we hit that all-time high, $1 could only buy you roughly 1,400 Satoshis. Now the current market cap for Bitcoin sitting at one point, Two four trillion dollars. So there you have it, family. Welcome everyone just joining the early live stream here on Friday. It's gonna be sick when Grayscale is done selling. Preach. Tell him, Serge. Yes, me too. The bulls are on a parade, says Kitty. Right on. What does that say? Stern f- Stern f- show fan? Me? Yes, actually. I grew up listening to Howard Stern. But um to be honest, I haven't listened in years. Not the biggest fan anymore clearly, but huge respect to what he has done in, you know, talk show radio and all that. Um, I used to listen to him every day as an appraiser in Florida, appraising real estate. I'd have my satellite radio, Sirius, and uh, yeah, I would tune into the show every day. Uh, Good show. Funny, entertaining show, to say the least. I don't know why you mentioned that, but yeah. I, I recall, like, all the legends that Stern minted, like Beetlejuice, most hilarious guy of all time, Hank the Dwarf, Angry Dwarf. I know he's not with us anymore, rest in peace, but yeah, he has some great personalities on that show, family. Doing my job to Orange Pill, everyone. I cannot buy them at least to get them to the market to help out pushing the supply shock ASAP. Might be the last chance to get the Bitcoin Holio while it's on sale. All hail the king of the Bitcoin Holio. Shout out Locks Guy. Shout out to all the legends out there. Shout out to all the members. We appreciate your family. Next week, we should see the inflows go crazy millions. Shout out Jay Ford. Respect. Today is the sell-off Friday. It'll drop to 60 Gs today, then blast off next week. So do you think 60 will be the low? Do you think we hold? It seems 60 is the new 20. Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, if it's not Coinbase crapping on the all-time high, it's Grayscale selling off their ish. Do you think this is an orchestrated thing with them keeping their fees so high, forcing people to sell, maybe working some things behind the scenes with the SEC? I'd love to know your thoughts. My biggest mistake recently was buying 2X leverage Bitcoin ETF BitX. That is doing worse than Bitcoin due to the GTF outflow. Sorry to hear that, Toasty Toast. It's funny how Beetlejuice got his name from the movie. It's because his head is like that big. I heard they're making a new Beetlejuice, by the way. They should just star the real Beetlejuice. What do you guys say? Best crypto channel, hands down. Appreciate that, Joe. Folan, respect. Shout out Mike Grell. Appreciate you subbing. Anyone who subscribes to the channel during the live stream, you're going to get an on-screen shout out and a shout out by yours truly. So make sure to subscribe, family. How low, JV, is between 55 to 60. 60 just being nice. Right on. I appreciate you sharing your thoughts. Aqua says 55,000. Please, then to the moon. Yes, let's send it, shall we? Pump that mother freaka up. But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets at a profit. I don't know about all that, lady. Shout out Jay Snow. I have so much respect for all that you do to maintain such positivity. I need you in my life. Well, the good news... I am in your life because you're tuned in. I'm here for you guys every day, at least two shows per day. We do a pod episode live stream typically for two hours, and then we do the premiere every evening at 10 p.m. Eastern on the tube, and plus we have the uncensored version of the show exclusive on Rumble, so shout out to the Rumble fam as well. You just got to pump it up, but what do we call those who hoard and use fiat currency as a store of value? They have a name for that. I forget. What do we call those folks? People, people, people. That use, 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 use fiat, fiat, fiat. I think it'll be 68,000 by the end of the weekend, says Zach. Word up. Short term low is in already. Look at the volume, says Megadon. Welcome, family. Fiat. Currency, 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 currency as a store of store. store, store value. value. Shout out, Jess Bird. Appreciate you well, fam. Respect. Let's get it. We call them core. We call them core. People who use fiat as a store of value. We got a name for those folks. We call them people, people, people that use. You got that right, family. Fiat, fiat. You guys are too smart. You're one step ahead of me. Shout out to the normies as well. Last week, I closed a long trade with a small profit. Bybit stung me with a thousand in funding fees. Good Lord. What's up with that, Bybit? Took my profit. What gives? Not a good look. I know they're going through some 
tribulations as well um, with uh, three-letter organizations. So be very careful with your funds on that exchange right now, family. Currency. We call them the core. We call them the core. No kombucha today, family. Just water. Just got to get a valid range. So 5560 is going to give the folks some optimism. Right on for that. Shout out OG Back Road Crypto Bootleg. Pump the likes, pump the stream. Let's motherfucking go. We call them the core. We call them the core. Anyways, family, let's check out some of the charts and see what's popping right now. With a little astrology for men, aka technical analysis. I mean, Bitcoin was at 66,000 like an hour ago or so. We just started dumping, so more than likely a lot more outflows from GBTC. So here we go. Despite a continuous four day streak of net outflows from the Bitcoin ETFs totaling almost 94 million, the Bitcoin price impressively climbed back to reclaim 66. That was before about an hour ago, where we just dumped now back down to 63. So in stark contrast, the Black Rocks bit. Spot Bitcoin ETF, which is iBit, witnessed a considerable net inflow of a quarter billion yesterday, raising iBit's total net inflow to 13.32 billion. Whoa. This is slightly below the average for BlackRock, which has seen 272 million in inflow since its launch January 11th. Other ETFs have not fared as well in recent days. Fidelity's FBTC, the second largest ETF, has thus far achieved an average daily inflow of 141 million, but experienced a disappointing two and a half million million in inflows just yesterday. Then we have the third largest ARK Invest spot Bitcoin ETF has seen an average inflow of 41 million to date with yesterday's inflow at 2 million. And then we have Bitwise's BitB ranking fourth, accumulating 31 million on average with a modest 12 million worth of inflows yesterday. So all across the board, all spot Bitcoin ETFs, including GBTC, have recorded an average of approximately 230 million in daily inflows since January 11th, as you can see in the green on this chart, brought to you by Farside, or actually this one was shared by Whale Panda, brought to you by Farside. Now, CryptoQuant CEO provided insights in the current situation, quoting them here, Bitcoin spot ETF net flows are slowing. Demand may rebound if the price approaches critical support levels. The new whales, mainly the ETF buyers, have a 56,000 on-chain cost basis. Corrections typically entail a max drawdown of roughly 30% in bull markets with a max pain of 51,000. And then we had Whale Panda highlighting the trend, noting yesterday's ETF flows another negative day. That's four in a row. Honestly surprised by how big the outflows are from GBTC. Another 358 million. That makes a total of 1.83 billion in four days. That is mind boggling. Well, Panda also touched on the Genesis's role, suggesting the company's in kind sale of GBTC shares for Bitcoin might explain the large outflows without corresponding market dumps. Now, Thomas Farrer, founder of Apollo, offered a bullish perspective, quoting him here, I know it's forbidden to post anything bullish on Bitcoin ETFs right now, but I'm going to do it anyway. GBTC selling is temporary. Financial advisors and institutions have barely begun buying. 100 billion inflows are coming in the next one to two years patience. Then we have Charles Edwards, founder of Caprioli Investments, commenting on the Grayscale situation, quoting him here, Grayscale Bitcoin ETF holdings falling off of a cliff, down 50% or about $20 billion at the current Bitcoin price. We must be days or weeks away from them slashing the fees to stop the bleeding. I think that's the key. Once they slash those fees, maybe the bleeding will stop. BlackRock holding is expected to overtake Grayscale, before the halving, I mean, that's right. They have well over 200,000 Bitcoin in their possession now. Talking about BlackRock, I should say, through their custodian Coinbase. Now, although the last few days have been rather disappointing, it is worth noting that the outflows are almost exclusively from GBTC, while other investors are holding on tight to their Bitcoin investments. This means that it's only a matter of time before Grayscale's outflows stop. And even small inflows from other ETS make a big impact without the outflows. So there you have it, crypto fam. And quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, the sailor plunge protection team is busy stacking them sats. Bitcoin has a hard floor and no top. The risk reward of Bitcoin has never been better. Buyers today have the least risk owning Bitcoin that at any time in its history. Tell them, family. So there you have it. What are your thoughts? How low do you think she'll go? And when do you think these ETF outflows from GBTC will come to a halt? Holla. Shout out Juan Espino. Appreciate your family. Shout out to all the HODL gang members, MicroStrategy, Satoshi. We appreciate you guys as well as the Grayscale. Once we hit 100, 
to the moon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, in relaxing. Welcome, family. Good to see you today. Shout out Devon Short, rocket ship to the moon. Send it. There's a name for them. What do we call them? What do we call those folks? There's a name. We call them core. Hilarious. Lower, damn it, says Jay Snow. How many of you would like a lower Bitcoin price action right now? I'm curious. How many of you are praying to the Bitcoin gods? Please correct even more so I can buy more biddies. I'm curious. Remember this date, 100,000 May 19th. A time traveler told me. Well, then it must be true. Shout out Megadon. 100 G's, baby. By May 19th. Send it. And considering we're back to 60,000, here's a little Conor McGregor for you. 60 G's, baby! <laughs> hey, we can still celebrate Orange Panty Night with 60,000. Let's not forget. Beginning of February, we we're at 40,000. So let the Orange Panty Night night resume. It's Red Panty Night when you sign to find me, yeah? Back at your back at home with your wife. Yes. Good morning, JB. Thank you, Devon. The Fed has stated that they are warning the stagflation like they never saw after the 70s. This will cause Bitcoin to go through the roof. Raise the roof. Love it. Lower, please. Ready to buy more, says Don. Right on. Plastic to Bitcoin. What do you mean by that, Simon? No more lower. My USD is tapped out. Respect, Expos. I think a lot of you guys are in a similar situation as John here. Let the lettuce hands be removed. Yes, the day port noise. Sorry. Bitcoin isn't sorry. Plastic to Bitcoin. We convert waste plastic into sats. Oh, nice. That's pretty dope. Only got room for diamond hands. You damn straight. <laughs> I am never selling. Love to hear that, Ron. Job bless, family. Let's go. One, two, three. Yes, what you all know about the 10 sats commandments. Well, 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 you know what time it is. Don't worry, I'm going to be blasting this track, celebrating a new all-time high before you know it. We back, baby. Bitcoin, shit coins, or NFTs. Constance says, is there an easier way to buy a whole Bitcoin? All the exchanges have deposit limits. That is sad. I think you could do so with a wire. That's how I would always purchase larger amounts of Bitcoin. I'd send a wire, let's say, to Coinbase, and then bada boom, bada bing. I don't think there's any limits on that. What are your guys' thoughts? Are there alternative ways to buy a large amount of Bitcoin? Because now just one Bitcoin's freaking 63,000. Let me know. That's a good question for Connie there. There's no greater feeling than hitting that sweet, sweet. Old time high, old time high, old time high in this bitch. What do we do when there's an all time high in this piece? Watch it pump to the sky. We just buy and get yeah. rich. Tell them. Please hit those thumbs up. Appreciated family. Let's dive to our next story of the day. And welcome everyone just joining the stream. Let's discuss a little Ethereum analysis, shall we? Here we go. Ether price could reach 5400 this year, according to a technical indicator used by traders to assess whether crypto is overbought or oversold. Here we go. Uh, so Ether can surpass 5,400 in the high-risk scenario based on the Meyer multiple oscillator, which is a ratio based on comparing Ethereum's current price with its 200-day moving average. The analysis was shared by CryptoQuant verified author Bing Dang, March 21st, as you can see on this chart. Ether price can reach the upper band of this indicator, but that would be much higher than 5,400. Bitfinex analyst shared, we expect it to reach oversold condition this year based on the fact there is a cyclical behavior of the asset to oscillate between the overbought and the oversold bands of the indicator. However, this is the dynamic moving average based deviation, and the upper band may be above the 54 level, 5400 that is, by the time the price reaches those levels. Ether's price currently trading back at 3300 uh, around 27% away from its all-time high, which was roughly 4900 reached all the way back on November 16th, 2021. 
That's right. Now, based on the fundamental value added by the recent upgrade, DenCon, the ETH slash Bitcoin pair can reach the 2021 bull market highs, according to Bitfinex analysts, quoting them here. This could mean an approximate value of 5,900 for ETH based on the current Bitcoin market price. Again, we can expect the Bitcoin price to be higher than the current levels by this time. This level on the ETH Bitcoin ratio is reached. The potential approval of a spot Ether ETF is currently the most anticipated event that could influence Ether's short to medium term price trajectory. So I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think the SEC will give a green light to an Ethereum ETF this year? Yay or nay? Let me know. The approval of the Ether ETF is less certain than the previous approval of Bitcoin ETFs, according to the Recharge Capital founder, John Lowe, who expects more regulatory scrutiny from the SEC. Meanwhile, the US SEC has pushed its decision on VanX ETF app to May 23rd. It also postponed its decision on the Hashdex and ARC21 shares spot Ether ETFs to March 19th. Both ETF apps have a final deadline for a decision in late May. So let me know, family, how you feel that will likely play out. And how high do you think the Ethereum price action is likely to reach for this particular cycle? I'm more optimistic than a $5,200 target. I think very realistically, Ether can go anywhere from 10 to 15,000. But I want to know your thoughts, family. Holla. Bitcoin, why you be treating me this way, says Jace. Gensler's not going to let a Ishcoin ETF happen, says Phil C. Not a chance Gary allows the ETH ETF, says Jackie Tucker. That is crazy and the market is still up, so wrong. Word. Shout out Menendez. Thanks, you're welcome crypto today, said 220,000 five years ago. Kaus969, you're referring to Max there. Sell ETH for Solana. Says Christian. Uh, K Jam says, let's freaking go. Back. We back in the black. We back in the green. Got the team all around me. We rowdy and causing scenes. Let's go. Holla, man. They are propping up the stock market. They will prop it up until it becomes obvious that they are lying. Yeah. Tell me about it. What's M ETH family? Daddy O, what's the M stand for there? Let me know. Way too early, JV? Yeah, I know. My man, we sell your alts for Solana. Oh, Christian is saying sell your alts for Solana. Tell me two reasons why you're bullish on Solana. I would love to know, Christian. What about Cardano? What about it? So yeah, they're essentially shooting themselves in the foot, says Jay Ford. It is a dip, leverage or soul away. Right on. Shout out MD Reyna. Appreciate you subbing to the podcast family. I've sold everything I own for Bitcoin. I love it. Well done. All in. How many of you are all in on Bitcoin? Let me know. Any thoughts on Anchor? I don't know much about it. This consolidation has taken longer than I thought it would, but we're still going to 100,000 before the halving and a million this year, says Barak. Amen to that. I'll toast to that. Cheers. Best to come clean so everybody eats rather than chasing their own tail. Where you been? Grab a cup, baby. Come and take a sip. Oh my bad. Yo, what's up? Man, you did it by the dip. <laughs> people say Cardano is going to go to four bucks. Yeah, and there's also people that say Cardano is going to go to zero. You know, one of those men are uh, Max Kaiser. <laughs> Uh, there's no second best. It's called Bitcoin. Good points. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. You know what I mean? BlackRock purchased the GBTC future and when it converted to the spot, they're now selling, controlling the price, but it won't last. Just a thought. I think that makes sense there, Crypto Today. Appreciate the insights. Cheap, fast transactions on Sol Solana. Thank you, Warren, for that. I'm all in. Beats Fiat. Damn straight. We don't save in fiat. People that, people that save in fiat currency. What do we call those folks? What up, JV? Rainy day here. And uh, where's that? Sore flow. Where's that at, Freddie? Uh, Puerto Rico's beautiful fam. What does Michael Saylor say about the second best currency? I'm not saying I'm number one. Uh, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. 
JB, do you think Bitcoin can reach 70,000 before the end? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We can be back at 70 this weekend, you know? There's no telling. Oh, mirrored ETH. I don't know about this mirrored ETH. That's interesting. There can only ever be one. JB, do you think Bitcoin? Yes, absolutely official. Sailor's giving away 1,000 ETH getting line. Wow, SpongeBob. <laughs> you know Sailor wouldn't touch ETH with a 10-foot pole. So you know those are AI deep fakes for those who maybe don't know, just to be clear and clarify. No one, including Michael Saylor, is ever going to give you double whatever you send him. In fact, it won't go to Michael Saylor. It's going to go to some scammer in some third world country scamming you, pretending to be Michael. Welcome to YouTube. JBD, yes, don't keep asking the same question, Lele. I think I answered that already three times. Absolutely, 70,000 in play. Greetings from Sylvania, Bitcoin to the moon. There's no second best crypto asset. But anyways, fam, next story of the day. Let's discuss these GBTC outflows, shall we? Crypto asset manager Grayscale's Bitcoin ETF has notched another day of high outflows as nearly 360 million exited the fund March 21st. But analysts think the exodus can soon come to an end. Now, GBTC's March 21st net outflows of 359 million follows a massive week of outflows with its 642 million, March 18th being the largest day on record as per the far side investors. The latest figures bring the week's total outflows of GBTC to 1.8 billion and on a mark, the fourth consecutive day of net outflows across all 10 spot Bitcoin ETFs. Now, senior Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric Balchunez speculated in a post that much of Grayscale's outflows could soon draw to a close, with the majority of them coming from bankruptcies of crypto firms due to their size and consistency. Quoting Balchunas here, any Gemini Genesis outflow likely buying Bitcoin with cash, hence Mark holding up the market. Takeaway, the worst is probably close to being over. Once it is, only retail will be left, and flows should look more like the February trickle. There you go. Now, as of March 21st, Grayscale reported its Bitcoin trust held a total of 23 billion in assets under management and then had shed 13.6 billion since being converted into a Bitcoin ETF. That's more than half of their stash. And in line with Balchunas, anonymous independent researcher, Ergo BTC suggests approximately 1.1 billion worth of GBTC outflows over the last few weeks appear to have come from bankrupt crypto lender. Genesis, that would explain the dumpage of GBTC. As pointed out here, Genesis is back from the dead, taking down more than 16.8 thousand BTC in the last few weeks to two new addresses. Likely, these coins are primarily sourced from the GBTC outflows and resulting activity volumes and timings of funds out of GBTC and into Genesis match pretty well. Simply, there just aren't that many 2,000 Bitcoin TXs per day. So likely the GBTC outflows and Genesis inflows are related. So there you have it on that. And also February 19th, Genesis received approval from the U.S. court to begin liquidating $1.3 billion worth of GBTC shares in a bid to repay its creditors. Nearly a month prior, bankrupt crypto exchange FTX sold 22 million GBTC shares, valued at nearly 1 billion, completely liquidating all of its holdings. Thank God for that. So that the good news was the silver lining. The FTX estate has no more exposure to the GBTC. They already dumped their $1 billion worth. And it seems Genesis and these other, uh, you know, Firms uh, are also, you know, coming to a, an end here soon, which is definitely good so that the inflows can take back over because it's primarily the majority of these outflows right now are all coming out of GBTC. And if they're defunct, right, then they got to pay back creditors. That would explain it. Thank you for sharing the rules there, Jennifer, and respect. Uh, appreciate the moderators. Everyone respect the mods. One of my friends almost sent me the scammer Bitcoin. Thank God she asked me about it. Good Lord, Crypto Queen. It's crazy how many of them there are. And they get all the attention. Like, I'll be going live, like right now. I got 250 people on the YouTube stream. The deep fakes will get 25,000 on the stream, and they'll stream for hours. They'll scam people out of millions of dollars collectively of Bitcoin. And they'll just keep running. It's mind-boggling. Yeah, you know I mean, you know what? He is just reading the news, right? If you don't like the stream, then don't watch it. Yeah, if any of you guys don't like it, feel free 
to tune into another show. I traded all my Bitcoin for Doge. Doge to the moon, says SpongeBob. Ouch. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? Doge ain't the second best. There is no second best. The title is accurate, says Phil C. What is my title again? Oh, yeah. It's an Arthur Hayes prediction. Brand new. He says Bitcoin is going to hit seven figures by the end of this cycle. If you don't agree with that, cool. You're entitled to your own opinion. This is Arthur Hayes' opinion. Arthur Hayes is a billionaire in the space. A lot of respect. He actually co-founded BitMEX, which used to be the largest derivatives crypto exchange in the world. Then they got attacked by the SEC. I don't know if they're even still big or how big they are compared to before. But nonetheless, respect to Arthur Hayes. Love the stream even more when the price pumps. Respect Menendez. Once the dump is over, Grayscale must lower the fees. Right on, John. Hamzat is the Bitcoin of MMA. <laughs> <laughs> JV, which meme do you think can move 10x a cycle? I don't really care. I don't follow the meme coins. I mean, we follow them in the market watch, but I should say I'm not invested in any meme coins. I'm not looking for that meme coin to 10x. I think Bitcoin can 10x. I'm happy with that. Yes, some meme coins will 10,000x, but again, I'm not looking for that 10,000x gainer. I'm happy with Bitcoin doing another 100x in my lifetime. I'll settle for that. My first Bitcoin was purchased at roughly 1,500. So, yeah, you know I mean, I'm good with that. Is that cool? What's the second best crypto? Bitcoin. <laughs> What's the second best? There is no second best. Tell them. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? The, the point is... The point is, if, if you have the superior asset, it's going up forever, Laura. Take all yes. JV is just like a young Mike Saylor. <laughs> Traded all my ETH for soul yesterday. Hopefully, it'll pay out by the year's end. Wish you the best with it, brother. I truly do. I like seeing people win. There are other cryptos. I forget too, Data. What's crypto? Crypto news alerts. Um... <laughs> Bought Bitcoin at 4,000. Congratulations. Well done. You're up. Winning. You're up like uh, more than 10x. Well done. Biddies. Please stand up. But anyways, fam, we discussed the latest with the GBTC outflows. Now let's discuss the latest out of Argentina. You know, inflation is wild out there. The headline reads, Argentinians ditching the U.S. dollar and turning to Bitcoin in droves amid 276% inflation. Here's the latest report. Argentines reportedly buying Bitcoin instead of the U.S. dollar. I mean, why would you buy the U.S. dollar if you can buy Bitcoin? Those who hoard the U.S. dollar and treat it as a store of value. What do we call them, folks? According to Sailor, we call them poor. So to protect themselves against currency devaluation, good for them. According to Bloomberg, Argentina-based crypto exchange Lemon is seeing a large increase in Bitcoin purchases as the South American country faces an inflation rate of 276%, currently one of the highest in the world. In the week ending March 10th, the exchange recorded 35,000 transactions to buy Bitcoin. This purchase volume is double the weekly average last year. Now, other major exchanges in Argentina, such as Ripio and Bello, also see a similar trend. According to a Bello CEO, Bitcoin and Ethereum purchase volumes have so far increased by tenfold, wow, in 2024, compared to the same period last year, while the purchase of currency-backed stablecoins fell from 70 to 60%. Quoting the report, the user decides to buy Bitcoin when they see the news that the currency is going up, while stablecoin is more pragmatic and many times used for transactional purposes as a vehicle to make payments abroad. Now, the report also says that the US dollar has lost its appeal as a safe haven asset. Preach! Over the past two months, as the Bitcoin dollar value rose by 60%, dwarfing the Argentine peso's 10% gain against the green pack, green back over the same period. And according to economist Nicholas Godano, Argentines have around 200 billion in US currency savings, surpassing only the dollar holdings in the United States and Russia. But the report says locals are now using their dollar savings and making investments to protect themselves from inflation. Now, hypothetically speaking, if you lived in Argentina right now, what would you be doing? Buying Bitcoin, anybody? So yeah, the only thing that can save them, Bitcoin is the life raft. 
Bitcoin is the oxygen mask. Bitcoin is the hedge against inflation. Bitcoin is the hedge against deflation. Bitcoin is the insurance policy. Bitcoin is the way to unplug from the matrix. Bitcoin is sovereignty. Bitcoin represents freedom. Bitcoin represents transparency. Bitcoin is immutable. Bitcoin is borderless. Bitcoin is unconfiscatable. Bitcoin is the only non-GMO corn available on the planet. Stack your Bitcoin accordingly or forever hold your peace, family. Real talk. I know I've been going on a rant there, but it's real. Don't get realer than that. 1.5 trillion from Japanese pension funds. That's right, SpongeBob. We actually discussed that breaking news a couple pod episodes ago. The largest pension fund in the world out of Japan is looking into investing into Bitcoin. You already know. Shout out Javier Malay. He boarded up the Central Bank of Argentina and followed through what he said he was going to do. Respect to Javier Malay. Let's go. Shout out Argentina. Considering the fact that the government had a debt of 32 trillion, it's going to add 1 trillion, 1.2 trillion. Good Lord. Anyone holding the dollar is going to get wrecked. That's right. The dollar being the ultimate ish coin. I rather have sheep. And I don't hold sheep, but I rather have sheep for Christ's sake and Dogecoin over the US dollar. The US dollar is the ultimate ish coin. Just saying. Malay at Davos was the goat, according to Menendez. Bob Espinoza Pantalones, something. You're watching the wrong channel. <laughs> biddies and biddies, everyone follow my moves. Bitcoin got the moves. Bitcoin is legal in Russia. GMO corn, not so much. Precisely. Get off the sinking ship and get on the Bitcoin lifeboat. Cheers to that, Tim. Couldn't have said that better myself. There's no second best crypto asset. It isn't slightly different. I used to argue with Solaway on his channel when he called Bitcoin a sinking ship. Did he really call Bitcoin a sinking ship? What a fool. I was calling it a life raft. As far as I know, I was the first to coin that term, the Bitcoin life raft. Respect, Data Biter, and respect for calling him out on his stream. What a misleading mofo to call Bitcoin a sinking ship. Like, for real? Was he encouraging people to buy stonks? Like, what the frick? Yeah, I perceive him as an enemy of Bitcoin. I don't know him, never watched none of his streams. I just know him because everyone talks about him. But I can tell you from what I hear, he's an enemy of Bitcoin. Clearly, simple and plain. So don't take Bitcoin advice from any enemy of Bitcoin. They're just going to tell you, it's a sinking ship. It's the Titanic. You know I mean? Short Bitcoin, I'm telling you guys, it's going back down to 12,000. I study the charts and I have a man bun, so I know everything. My man bun is an antenna. To the universe. I get inside information from God. Sure, buddy. Anyways, I digress. He was saying that stocks could crash, but Bitcoin would be the first sinking ship. Like I said, what a fool. Anyone saying that propaganda is a fool or just paid off very well to mislead you, which makes him criminal. Criminals, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance, Shout out to Jamie Demon. He pushes his course, con man. Well, there you go. He's selling a course. Makes sense now. Great rant. Love it. Appreciate that, Ashley. Cheers. Negative interest rates is crazy, but no to robots, I guess. Japan is interesting. Cheers. Welcome to pause. Welcome back, I should say. They're sending Kamala Harris to Puerto Rico for Hispanic outreach. So which nationality is she claiming? Is she claiming every nationality? Isn't they claiming she is... African-American? Are they now claiming she's Puerto Rican? That's interesting to me. Send her back. We don't need her here. I believe he is a puppet. Real talk, Paul, probably. Bitcoin Trini, what's going on, broski? Welcome to the stream. But anyways, let's dive into our next story of the day. Discuss this $250,000 target according to Standard Chartered Bank, and that would be by next year. And then we'll discuss the $1 million price prediction from the former BitMEX CEO, Arthur Hayes, just blaze. And welcome everyone just joining the stream. The headline here reads, Bitcoin can soar 266% to 250000 per coin next year if ETF inflows stay strong, Standard Chartered 
says. And yes, the largest shareholder of Standard Chartered is BlackRock. Bitcoin can surge as high as 250000 which is a quarter million next year, 2025, propelled by the success of Spot. ETFs and growing interest from reserve managers, according to Standard Charters. Uh, Geoff Kendrick, who forecasted that on a note on Monday, Bitcoin next year could overshoot the analysis original prediction, which was 200,000 by 2025, before settling back down in a range around that level. Such a stellar rise is likely if fund inflows remain as strong as they are, according to the firm. Meanwhile, support could also come from the FX reserves, a source of cash that could enter the sector as soon as this year. Quoting him again, we think U.S. and EU sanctions on Russia's reserves have structurally increased the appeal of non-standard reserve assets for FX reserve managers. The most obvious beneficiaries of this are gold and the CNY, but digital assets could also benefit. If they do, we would expect the largest and most liquid assets, such as Bitcoin, to receive the most of the inflows. I agree, because Bitcoin is the apex predator. So for 2024, Kendrick expects Bitcoin to reach 150000 this year. Let me know if you agree. As sharper than expected gains so far this year have boosted his previous 100000 estimate. The token has already climbed as much as 73% year to date hitting a record high of 73,800 one week ago after January's spot Bitcoin ETF approval ignited the rally. Kendricks long argued that the funds would open crypto to a new group of investors and now noted the net inflows have become Bitcoin's largest driver and are likely to be sticky. Also boosting the price forecast is Bitcoin's April having 30 days away, a recruiting event that diminishes the amount of Bitcoin awarded to the miners at the current levels. New ETF buying is worth around 2.5x the new supply and should increase to 5x. I mean, it could be 1020x because some days it's 10x already, family. Now, further support for the 200,000 outlook comes from the gold versus Bitcoin portfolio optimization, suggesting an 80 to 20 split between the two assets. However, current optimization stands closer to 91% for gold and 9% for Bitcoin. Who makes these silly allocations up? They should flip that in a New York minute. It should be at least 91% Bitcoin and 9% gold. Let me know if you agree with JV. But anyways, quoting the analyst again, assuming the gold price stays unchanged, the Bitcoin price would need to increase to 190,000 USD in order for Bitcoin to share to, uh, or the Bitcoin share to rise to the 20% indicated by our portfolio optimization. And in a separate note, he also projected higher upside for Ethereum. Not only has Ethereum's newest upgrade dramatically reduced its transaction costs, only on the second layer family. The coin is likely to benefit from its own spot Bitcoin ETF potentially coming from the SEC in May. Now, mixed bags and thoughts on that because many people are not anticipating the approval, but clearly, again, BlackRock is the largest shareholder of Standard Chartered and Standard Chartered and BlackRock clearly want this Ethereum ETF. Now, typically, BlackRock gets what they want, so that's why I want to know your thoughts. Now, borrowing from Bitcoin's trajectory, this could send Ethereum to 8,000 or even 14,000 by the end of 2024 and 2025. So let me know your thoughts on their 8,000 Ethereum prediction for this year and 14,000 next year, as well as Bitcoin smashing a quarter million dollars per coin in 2025 as per standard chartered bank. Welcome everyone joining the stream. I know I'm streaming bright and early today. It's 1118 or 1119 now here in Puerto Rico. We're live and in the flesh. Bitcoin to a milli, I reckon I'll wait for 78,000 first. You reckon correct, Red X, unless we get that God candle. Law of supply and demand. If demand stays constant, supply is cut in half, the price of the product will double. Amen. Cheers to the stock to flow. Stock to flow shows Bitcoin is going to go where no man has gone before. To the moon. I'm just saying. Oops, I am late. Hit the likes. Cheers, Lisa. Appreciate you. It's Friday again. You already know. Textbook definition of inflation. Right on. Exactly. How would ETH ETF rejection effect Bitcoin. I think more people will invest in Bitcoin. I think if we get an ETF, some of the institutions are going to diversify and uh, put some inflows into ETH, which can take away some of the potential inflows of Bitcoin, just like the market dominance, right? We look at the, uh, when we did the market watch earlier, we look on coin market cap and you can notice that the Ethereum market cap is on the decline and, or the market share, right? The dominance and Bitcoin's on the climb. So those two are always competing 
for market share, you got to consider, even though they're not competing as far as technology and such, because completely different use cases, but the number one and number two crypto coins in the world, of course. Uh, shout out Fresh, just gifted 10 MicroStrategy membership of the channel. Congratulations, Paul, Dro, Ronin, Ronin, Jumpman Crypto, Bo Kana. We are slaves. <laughs> Josh Decker, Steven with the PH, Mohammed, uh, the Hoddle King. You've all been hooked up with the MicroStrategy membership of the channel on behalf of Fresh Six, keeping it Fresh Six. So thank you so much. That's very kind of you, family. Paul says thank you. Everyone show him some love. We appreciate that. And shout out to all the new members. Respect. Data Dash, Ivan, I've been, who is right here? Now, I've discovered Data Dash is also a perma bear. So I don't even look at his stuff anymore. When I first got into crypto, I'm like, oh, Data Dash, million subscribers. It seems the people with the most subscribers are the biggest enemies of Bitcoin. So maybe once you hit 500,000 subscribers, they pay you off, they give you $10 million, and they just tell you to FUD Bitcoin. I'm speculating here, but I'm starting to feel this way. When am I going to get my bribe? Are they going to be like, yo, J yo, JV, we're going to give you, uh, you know, a thousand Bitcoin. Just start fudding it every day and say it's it's the worst crypto of them all and start promoting uh, Solana and Doge. I'll be like, for real? <laughs> Is this what happens when you hit a certain level? I'm curious. It's always nice to have women up in here. Amen to that. Women are the greatest. Without women, none of us would be here right now. Facts. Congrats on all the new members. Thank you, Fresh. We appreciate that. That's what's up. Ethereum is six. Bitcoin is number one, two, three, four, and five. There you go. I'll, I'll give Ethereum that. Number six? Yeah, you got it, Ethereum. 666, Vitalik. There we go. Now it's starting to make sense. Just saying. Shout out, David. <laughs> Shout out, Jerry. I know I'm exaggerating a little with that bribe, but it may work that way. Maybe you get the, you know, the $100,000 a month sponsorship deal when you sell your soul and start fudding Bitcoin and start promoting climate change. I, I'm starting to think this way. That's probably how it works, JB. But JB cannot be bought or ever sell his soul. This is true. I value my soul because I recognize myself and all of you as spiritual beings having a human experience. So who cares about this temporary life? I mean, not to say we don't care and don't respect life, but the afterlife is eternal. So why would someone sell their soul for short-term riches that you can't take with you in the afterlife? Makes no sense, big dog. That's right. Bitcoins rule everything around me. Cream, get the biddies. Million dollar bitch, y'all. Women can also use Bitcoin to buy whatever they want. Right. You can go to Sephora with your biddies and have a nice shopping spree. Facts. Thank you. Shout out Cosmic Calm. I love women too. Yes. They're saying earlier that it is interesting that the ones with the worst calls get the expert status in the interviews. Precisely. Precisely. <laughs> the YouTube channels in crypto with the most subscribers are the most delusional. I don't think that's a coincidence. Right? Meanwhile, the Bitcoin purists Get shadow banned. I only have 70,000 subs. I've been doing this for six years every day. I've been shadow banned for years, falsely terminated, you name it. I wonder why. Hmm. It's weird. Eternal riches is big. That's right. You can take your biddies with you to the afterlife. Remember your private key. That memory is so stored in your soul. Just saying. It's a rigged game. There you go, Paul. The metallic is a weird dude. Are you talking about vitalic or metallic? <laughs> it said, I must have did a spell check. It says metallic. <laughs> hey, unrelated question. What's a good cologne for men? It's funny you ask because I just got a new bottle of cologne my daughter picked out because of the bottle. So if you stick around on Rumble, I'll go for show and tell and I'll show you what the bottle is. It's a secret. But during show and tell on Rumble, I'll go run to my room and bring it to you. It smells really good. We went to, you know, the perfume store, cologne store, and, you know, they give you the samples on the stick, and we smelled like 12 or 15, like a lot of them. And my daughter's like, this is the one. And then a week later, I thanked her. I'm like, thank you for picking this cologne out for me. I really like it. I'm glad you picked it out for me. Thank you. And she said, 
can I tell you something? I'm like, sure. She's like, I picked it out because, not because of the smell, but it has the best bottle. I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> but it is the best bottle, so respect. Women are the best. JB, you're uh, one of the most upbeat crypto guy, and I don't watch any other people. Respect, Bob. Appreciate that. I'm just trying to do my best over here. Rage and Bull Cologne. Shout out to the Rage and Bull, Jake LaMotta. That was one of my favorite movies. Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci. Really good flick, by the way. Versace Euros is slamming. Word. Appreciate y'all. ETH equals WEF. World Economic Forum. Preach. I'm about to take a drive to the next town, but I'll listen to the review on Rumble. Appreciate that data. Women are the bestest. Lynn even wants to be one of them, says Toasty Toast. Toasty Toast got the jokey jokes. Bitcoin, etc. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals, drug traffickers. Sell them, Jamie. Why is uh, Bitcoin and ETH dumping, though? That's because there's mass outflows from GBTC right now. We discussed this earlier on the pod. But anyways... Uh, Let's dive into our feature story of the day, family. Welcome, everyone, just joining us. JB has a large pineal gland. Thank you. That's the greatest compliment I've ever received. Appreciate it. And shout out Nipsey, by the way. Nipsey says hello. He's over here chilling, chilling, chilling like a villain. You know what I mean? But anyways, fam, now let's discuss our featured story of the day. BitMEX's Arthur Hayes predicts Bitcoin will hit $1 million per coin in this particular Bull market cycle, respect, and shout out to just Blaze, Arthur Hayes. And welcome everyone just joining the stream. Here we go. Arthur Hayes, co founder of BitMEX, has made a bold prediction regarding Bitcoin's future price trajectory, suggesting Bitcoin will hit a million during this ongoing bull market. During an interview with Anthony Pompliano, shout out to Pompliano. Uh, Hayes expressed confidence in Bitcoin's long term prospects, stating, I think that Bitcoin will go to $1 million by the end of this cycle. Hayes' optimism stems from the increasing mainstream adoption of Bitcoin, as evidenced by the ease with which investors can now purchase Bitcoin ETFs with the click of a button. He further expressed belief that the current bull market is still in its nascent stages, fueled by global economic uncertainty and the resulting desire for a hedge against inflation. Quoting him again, I don't not think people have big enough imaginations right now. Bitcoin went so fast as 70,000. Why did it go so fast as 70,000? Because a bunch of people now can click like a checkbox and buy some Bitcoin ETF. This bull market is just getting started. Let me know if you agree with that family. 1 million bitty by the end of this cycle, which most likely could be next year, 2025, unless we get that 10-year bull run as sailors predicting, right? Now, notably, Hayes' prediction aligns with Kathy Wood, the CEO of ARK Invest. Shout out to Kathy Wood. Show Kathy some love, family. <laughs> who recently announced that Bitcoin could reach the 1 million mark before 2030. In fact, I covered this on the pod a few episodes ago. She is now projecting Bitcoin could hit as high as 2.3 million per coin. Wood's optimism stems from her conviction in Bitcoin's potential and the ability to reshape the global financial landscape. Moreover, we have Samson Mao, Chief Strategy Officer at Blockstream, who recently voiced Bitcoin's future trajectory, saying 1 million could be this year amidst unprecedented demand. Mao's outlook underscored the increasing demand for Bitcoin as a store of value and a hedge against inflation, particularly in the face of economic uncertainty and monetary stimulus measures. That said, Hayes' prediction comes amidst heightened volatility and fervent speculation surrounding Bitcoin. After experiencing significant price surges in the past few months and printing a new all-time high of 73800 one week ago, Bitcoin is facing a price recoil, mainly attributed to profit-taking, raising questions as to how low this dip will go. Let me know. Do you think 60 will hold up as support? Do you think we'll test 58, 55? Holla at your boy. Now, Pump Liano, however, weighed in on the crypto's recent drawdown during the interview with Bloomberg on Wednesday, highlighting Bitcoin's resilience in the face of recent pullbacks, emphasizing the crypto's historical context and long-term growth potential. And he makes a good point because these dips are shorter and shorter live because we're in a true bull. Uh, quitting them here, this is actually a very small drawdown in a bull market. He stated, that is true, comparing the current market correction to the previous cycles we experienced. Quoting him again, I think one of the lessons of Bitcoin over the last three, four years is no one knows what the future is going to be. And we have 
uh, even violated some of those historical rules that people held. We had never seen Bitcoin hit an all-time high before the halving. Both of those rules got broken, and so I think we're in uncharted territory, and he makes an excellent point. Let's discuss it. The first halving of Bitcoin was in 2012. The year preceding the halving, 2013, all-time high. Next halving, 2016. The year preceding that, in 2017, we hit the 20,000 all-time high. Then, like clockwork, 2020, next halving. In 2021, we hit the 69,000 all-time high. We recently just broke like a week or two ago. So, um, and it's always after the halving, we hit that all-time high. This time, the first time in Bitcoin history for this cycle, we hit the all-time high before the halving. I would guesstimate 45 days, 50 days before the halving. This has never been done before. So some would speculate, this is unprecedented. We've never had a cycle like this. All the previous models could be broken. We'll soon see. Some would still say and argue, no, the cycles are still intact. There's always going to be four-year cyclical cycles in Bitcoin. And it's ironic, we also have the presidential election this year, just as we had it in 2020, the year of the halving, and 2016, and so on. So ironic, coincidence, all by design, a master plan by Satoshi. I wanna know your thoughts. And yeah, I shared with you Samson Mao. He's still predicting $1 million this year in play. He's the most bullish of them all. Kathy Wood's calling for 2.3 million by 2030. We have fricking Max Kaiser. He upped his target as well for this cycle. He's projecting anywhere from 220,000 short-term target to 700, what do you say, 750,000. He just recently upped it. And we covered that about a week ago on the podcast um, as well. So I want to know your thoughts. When do you feel we realistically hit six figures first and foremost? Do you think we hit 100,000 leading into the halving? Do you think it'll be post-halving? Do you think it'll be later this year? Do you think it'll be next year? And when do you feel we'll likely hit seven figures, which is ultimately 10x uh, at the time of hitting that six-figure milestone? And just for some thought and perspective. From 50,000, 20X is a million dollars. Just let that sink in. Previous cycles, we have done 10X. So what if we repeat 10X this cycle? What if What is a 10X times two? That's a 20X, right? So what if we 10X two times? Above and beyond a million dollars per coin, family. Let that sink in. When do you feel that's likely to happen? What are the catalysts that will fuel Bitcoin besides the ones that were obvious that we just pointed out, right? We know we have a halving in uh, like 30 days. We know we're gonna have a supply shock. There's only 2 million Bitcoin on the exchanges. CryptoQuant predicts that happens in six months, meaning there's not gonna be any Bitcoin available for sale. 80% of the Bitcoin is currently in the hands of the long-term hodlers. And I don't care what the fiat equivalent is. I know I'm not selling. Are you guys selling? Quoting Max Kaiser from Bitcoin Miami conference when he was on stage with Mike Saylor. I'm not freaking selling. F Elon. I'm not selling. So you already know, guys. Uh, Nipsey's not selling either. Nipsey could be Satoshi for all we know and be holding on to 1.1 million coins right now. You think he's selling? Oh, hell no. Right? Nipsey gets it. Just saying. Any rate cuts, J. <laughs> My professional opinion is that it's going up forever, Laura. I agree with you, Lisa. Women are smarter than men. And let's just keep it at that. They have stronger intuition. So anything Lisa and Jennifer says, I agree 100% with. <laughs> right the wrong 100,000 prior to the halving, then 30 pullback. Wow, that'd be freaking wild. 100,000 and a drop 70%. I don't see a 70% drop happening again. But who knows, right? Who knows? Uh, w Stream, appreciate that. Wu Tang, Wu Tang. Waiting for the upside down legs from the bears. Right on. The double eclipse should make it more interesting. When is that uh, double eclipse? As people act a little differently during these events, hopefully we can slam 150,000 around the eclipse and reach 150,000 for the pre having. Send it. I love it. 64 and climbing. Keep going, JV. We ain't going anywhere. We right here. We keep this stream up pumping up. Not dumping, nah. You already knowin' how we freaking do. Okay, April 8th. So that gives us a, a couple of weeks. Nice. Bitcoin is at least bouncing. That's right. We're bouncing, yo. Oh dear, now we're dipping. This volatility is getting the best of me. Hey, volatility is a beautiful thing. 
welcome it. I want to see more extreme volatility and be quite honest with you. Um, instead of 3% down for the day, I'd, I'd rather see us go down 7, 8% today so we can jump up another uh, 45% for this month. I, I welcome the volatility. I, I recognize it as uh, opportunity and I recognize it as life force. I also recognize it as a way of life for Bitcoin. So bring the freaking Bitcoin volatility apocalypse, will you? Everyone should hold for eight and a half years to get through two cycles to get the massive gains. I second that. Some would say, I mean, this is fact. Everyone who has hodled Bitcoin for four years or longer is in the green and unrealized profits. Double that, eight years. You're going to be massively in the green, family. I know I haven't been hodling for eight years. I go back to 2017, so that gives me seven years. I'm going on my eighth year next year. And the gains in the eighth year are going to be insane. Just saying. JB, let the chat know about the 100K Fiesta. Thank you. We're going to be having a 100K Fiesta here in Puerto Rico. You guys are invited. For more details, make sure you're in the Discord. The Discord link is in the description, or you can just go to discord.cryptonewslers.net. Now, as we inch closer and closer to 100,000, we'll have the venue, the date, the prices, and all that released uh, first and foremost to the Discord. So far, I'm planning on having it at a very upscale resort in Puerto Rico, maybe in Condado, the nicest area in San Juan. We got options on the table right now. Uh, the Vanderbilt's the nicest hotel, but it's very expensive, but it is nice. You get what you pay for, and then we have alternative options as well. So we're plotting right now, family. Make sure you're in the Discord. Starting this cycle plus one million every cycle. Bring it, George. And thanks for the reminder, KJ. I appreciate you. Few is three to four. A couple is two. Well, that is true. A couple is two, by definition. Then the gingerbread man. Not a real person, right? That's the name that came from the movie. Gremlins. Never sell the biddies. Hello, family. Cheers, Muhammad. How, how's the, the brethren doing in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and in Qatar? You guys still anticipating a 30,000 dip? 10th year here, JV. Wow, Jennifer, 10 years. That's a decade. Holy moly. Been buying consistently since 2015 and hodling. Respect. Respect. <laughs> All hail, Jennifer. 10-year hodler. Whoa. True Bitcoin OGs. Respect. Facts. My wife is way smarter and makes 10x more than me. Cheers to that. April 8th eclipse. Let's go. Flexing on them, Crypto Surge. You already know. Let's go. More than five sats in your stack, then get it on. Yeah. Had the people on my back to get a song. Yeah. Bears broke, have a talk, we smoked them like a bong. Boom, they got smoked like a bong, those bears. 100,000 can afford the most expensive hotels. Precisely, that's my thinking. I'm like, nobody should be complaining about staying at a very nice hotel if Bitcoin's at 100,000, right? If you've done your job and you stack some Bitcoin, you shouldn't be complaining about that, right? But I know everyone's in a different boat at the same time. Not everyone's a whole coiner. I know some of you guys have more modest amounts. So we're going to have different options. And I'll let you guys decide what we do. And uh, I'll probably poll you guys. And you guys can share what you want to do. And we'll go with what the majority wants. But JV, I think, in my opinion, we should have the most badass hotel, the most badass experience, the most badass food, the most badass wine, the most badass champagne, champagne, you know what I mean? I think we should have the most badass experience, something you'll never forget if I was to vote. So that's my thinking, at least. Who here follows the Dutch YouTubers called Team Underground? I don't know if it'll likely be anyone. He is pushing his indicator saying, I told you so. No comment, because I don't like disrespecting people. <laughs> But use common sense, family. If anyone had such a great indicator, I don't think they'd be sharing it. They'd be hoarding it, not selling it. My third having, let's go. Let's go. Don't sell your sats for the party, though. <laughs> it's like, how about 15000 per ticket? <laughs> It'll cost you a fraction of a Bitcoin. Next cycle, we'll see the million-dollar Bitcoin most likely. Most likely, I would agree. Most likely, JV agrees. Can it happen this cycle? Absolutely. Is it most likely going to happen next cycle if I was a betting man? Yeah, in my opinion. 
Most of my capital isn't liquid. I live very frugally. Smart. It's called smart. JV lives a frugal lifestyle as well. Why? Because I hate, well, first and foremost, I know what it's like to be poor. I used to work at McDonald's and bag groceries at Publix. My, my job description was bagging groceries and collecting carts in the parking lot. It's hard to make money doing that. <laughs> so I, know, I respect money because I know what it's like to create it, especially when you're hurting for money, right? So when you start accumulating any level of money, you start to respect that. And so you want your money to work for you. How do you get your money to work for you? You put it in Bitcoin, the most ultimate savings that ever exist. You put the, the dollars in the bank. It's not working for you. It's working against you. Do you understand that? Saving in dollars is working against you. You will become poor <laughs> due to inflation. Exactly what they're experiencing right now in Argentina is what we're going to, it's just an extreme level, but that's what we're going to be experiencing here in United States. And the only way to hedge against that, Bitcoin. The greatest hedge, Bitcoin. The only non-GMO corn, Bitcoin. Just saying. Talk that real-ish. Thank you, DJ. Shout out Dorado. I got my cut yesterday. <laughs> my average price is 38.6. Not too shabby. That's what's up, Robert. Congratulations. I'm trying JV. Stop yelling at me. Am I yelling? Banance. The only thing close to Bitcoin is high-end comics. <laughs> like first appearance of Spider-Man. <laughs> at least there's real scarcity there, yo, unlike the dollar. I mean, Pokemon cards are more scarce than the dollar. There's not 10 trillion Pokemon cards. Everyone keeps going good, Toyota. Going right. Have you ever broke your, your dig through the garbage? Chris Record. <laughs> I'm going today. Like Andrew Tate, they talk about eating buckets of chicken from KFC, like from the garbage. Yeah, yo. 32,000 Bitcoin in play. Then it will Allah candle to over 100,000. Send the Allah candle. In the meantime, ICP to 5Gs and Metastow to 1G. Thank you for sharing, Muhammad. Respect. Everything keeps going. Cash is starting to seem strange to me. Cash is strange. It is strange. Cash is good for paying the bills, not for saving. Those who say fiat currency, what do we call those folks? We call them the poor. Okay. Okay. JVR Satoshi. now if I said I was, no one would believe me. No, I am not Satoshi. I would never pretend to be Satoshi because I despise what Craig Wright did misleading so many people by being fake Toshi. You know, he was a patsy for this other guy named Calvin and that's messed up, yo. A lot of people put their life savings into these ish coins thinking he was the real Satoshi. We all knew better, clearly, most of you guys, but some people get fooled by that ish. I am definitely not Satoshi. I wish I was. Actually, to be honest, I wish I wasn't. Because, yeah. It's hard to keep, it's hard to keep the secret. And if the secret was ever revealed, you know they just, Satoshi, right? So, just saying. And you know Satoshi didn't do it for the money. You know he's never touched any of his Bitcoin. He didn't cash in any of it. He hasn't sent any to the exchange. So you got to respect Satoshi. He did it for humanity. And that is very rare. Very rare. That's like Mahatma Gandhi rare. Right? That's like Jesus rare. That's like the Prophet Muhammad rare. That's like Buddha, the real Guatemala uh, Buddha rare. That's like Nipsey rare. That's like Charzander, Charizard, I don't know. I get mixed up with these Pokemon cards. That's like first Spider-Man rare, more rare. You know what I mean? Mo money, mo problems. Yes, it is true though. That's so true, that quote. And shout out Biggie, you know, that classic track. It is true because problems will escalate the more wealth you acquire. I know this from firsthand experience. Serious problems, um, things I wouldn't even talk about, that high level of problems I wouldn't even talk about on YouTube. But Andrew Tate talks about them all the time. Obviously, he has been deplatformed from YouTube. 
But uh, there's very serious problems. You become targeted, unfortunately, but you also have more resources to solve the problems. So life is just a big problem, infinite, smaller, you know what I mean, micro problems, and then you have to solve them. That's why I love chess. Chess is ultimately just a game of solving problems. And there's no one to blame if you make a mistake. You gotta own up to your bad move. Same thing in life. But people who can't solve the most basic problems are never going to acquire wealth because they struggle to solve things. Problem solving is the greatest skill set you can teach any child. That's why I believe that the game of chess is like the game of life. It's the greatest game we can play because it teaches you how to solve problems. And there's always multiple solutions to every problem. How do you find the best move on the chessboard? That's what I love. That's what I thrive. That's why I love chess. That's why I play chess puzzles. And the goal, find the best move on the board. I can do that all day, right? You get good at it. And then you get very efficient at solving problems. And then life becomes easier. But nonetheless, you're always going to have problems. There's no such thing as, oh, the problems disappear when you get money, right? Tell that to Justin Bieber. Tell that to any celebrity with all the money. And they'll tell you how crazy the problems become. You have no idea. Teach people D&D. What's the D&D stand for? I'm still pretty surprised how many people don't understand Bitcoin and the crypto market and afraid to get involved. Not a fan of Mr. Tate to each their own, Devon. I am a fan of the top G. Why? Because he teaches masculinity and to embrace it. And we live in a culture, unfortunately, where they suppress masculinity and they suppress a lot of things that I can't talk about on this channel. Um, plays 4D chess. Actually, I do. I have a 4D chess board, literally. Facts. Just keep quiet and show yourself no problems. It's good to keep gold or is it good to off the Bitcoin? Depends on who you ask. Um, I don't give investment advice. Everything shared in this channel is exclusive and is specific for entertainment purposes. But you study gold over the past decade and its performance and study Bitcoin over the past decade and its performance and make an intelligent decision on your own. Yeah, because when you are checked, you have a problem. We need men just like we need women. Facts. This is true. Something we don't need, in my opinion, I can't even say the word on here, but it's when a man is pretending to be a woman or a woman is pretending to be a man, that word. We don't need more of them. I'm just saying. Uh, he got me and took all my dough, heard him shout me out, ain't lost nothing. What are we crying about? Your cash ain't nothing but trash. I'm not sure who you're quoting there, Bob. You don't need to understand Bitcoin. You just need to understand it's going up forever, Laura. This is the bigger picture. Thank you, KJM. Tate needs to debate Lynn. <laughs> your health is the most important than wealth. Do your push-ups and stack your sats. This is true. Heck yeah. Agreed. You buy Bitcoin at the price you deserve. Word. Anyways, family, let's head on over to Rumble. I promise you a show and tell. I'm going to run to the bathroom, get my cologne. I'm going to share it. This is top secret. Don't tell anybody. You can see what kind of cologne JV is rocking that my daughter picked out for me. And uh, yeah, so head on over to Rumble right now. The YouTube stream is going to end. We're going to continue with the uncensored version of the show, exclusive only on Rumble. So head on over to Rumble, rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net, or click the link in the description, or just open up Rumble and type in Crypto News Alerts. You can't miss it. And uh, let's head on over there right now. Appreciate you guys. I'll be back on the tube, 10 p.m. Deuces. All right, YouTube stream, we ghost. Let me know if it's ended. 